On behalf of the American Academy of Neurology and in collaboration with Neurology Today, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Alexandra Miller. Uh, not only a colleague, a friend, a neighbor, uh, also a former trainee, um, Dr. Miller is an assistant professor at Weill Cornell Medicine and an assistant attending at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Dr. Miller, thanks for being here today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored to have been given the invitation to join you today. Dr. Isaacson was my program director um, at Cornell, dealt with, dealt with me day in and day out. Uh, so it's, it's very, very nice to be able to join you. Absolutely. And, and it's uh, no, no kinder of a thrill or whatever that stupid saying is that I just mangled uh, to see a former trainee. The student surpasses the teacher. There we go. Um, well, definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, um, so, so today we get to talk about um, all of, about e-learning and what the Academy has been doing for e-learning, especially specifically when it comes to COVID-19. And I bet most uh, folks of the Academy don't even realize uh, that there is an e-learning subcommittee. And um, when did you join that, that committee? Well, I definitely didn't realize either. I was very honored in 2015 when I was the chief president uh, to be invited to join the e-learning subcommittee and really happily surprised to see two very familiar faces, uh, Dr. Isaacson and Dr. Safdie, who's the Vice Chair of Education at Cornell, um, on the committee when I got there. Dr. Safdie at the time was the chair and Dr. Isaacson has since taken over. And so I really learned at my first committee meeting <laughs> what e-learning was. And I think, you know, over the past four years, we've launched several new programs one that you know, I'm directing our effort on, which is the Neurobytes program, which we'll talk about more today, um, and many other exciting endeavors as well. And I think they couldn't be more relevant um, at, than at the present time, of course. Yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. You know, when, we, when I joined uh, the e-learning subcommittee, it was actually called the Distance Learning uh, Committee or subcommittee, and we changed our name because e-learning, uh, we thought, was going to be uh, a bigger thing in the future in 2020 and beyond. And look what happened. I, I guess it has. Um, and, and really e-learning has been um, kind of a, a think tank in some ways, um, kind of a, a creativity sounding board. Um, Neurobytes, you know, three to five minute uh, short uh, educational pieces came out of a discussion. I think it was right around 2015, 2016 or so. And then you took the lead and, and now you're the chair of that working group. Um, we've, we've, launched a whole bunch of products. I think, I think our members know about Neuro SAE, the self-assessment exam, um, which, which I've taken every exam because for maintenance of certification, um, you need um, to take uh, self-assessment credits. So I've taken most of the SAEs. Uh, those, when you take those, go directly to the ABPN, the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, to fulfill, uh, I believe it's 24 credits that you need to get uh, every uh, three years or something like that. So the AAM has provided this for a free service, and we've done that. Um, NeuroReady is also a product that we've worked on, um, and uh, which is really getting ready for boards, maintenance of certification, continuing certification really um, is, is, um, is, is the term, and, and the board prep edition, um, which, which again, another free service from the AN to the members. Most, most members don't realize that the right exam, the residency in service training exam, um, is now being done online. That was an ask by members, uh, actually by, by you, by, by residents uh, throughout the country. And, and now we're offering the right exam um, online. And, and just last week, we, we launched a really cool app. Again, came up sounding board, Zach London, amazing job at University of Michigan. Uh, the question of the day app. So if, you, if you're watching and you don't know about the question of the day app, uh, check it out. Um, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I got a question wrong yesterday. So I've now, I've now tailed off. I'm no longer on the leaderboard. Um, but I found a typo in a question today. So that was, that was cool. Um, anyway, the uh, e-learning subcommittee does a lot of stuff. Um, we've worked on a new learning management system, education on demand. Um, Anyway, if, if uh, people want to learn more about e-learning, jump on to uh, NeuroLearn and, and on the AN website, you can learn more. But the focus of this talk is Neurobytes. Um, Alex, tell us what you've been up to. Um, tell us, you know, when COVID-19 hit, we needed to like pump out information. And, and maybe you can give us a history of what Neurobytes is, when it started, what kind of topics we've been covering, how we came up with the curriculum, and then specifically focus on uh, the COVID-19 uh, topics recently. Yeah, well, I mean, I remember, I think we, we talked about this at our meeting, that the first meeting I was at in 2015, and you were very vocal about talking about and trying to capitalize on the opportunity for micro learning, especially, you know, as the millennials become doctors, <laughs> and trying to get them to 
for us to deliver neurology content in a way that's more palpable and easier for them to manage. Um, so for a long time, the e-learning uh, subcommittee was directing these neuro-learn courses, which were much longer, much more involved, and really taking months and months, six months to a year, really, uh, to get off the ground and going. And before we knew it, we were having to, you know, sunset these episodes that people had worked really hard on because they were outdated really before they even came out. So we were trying to find a way to, to develop a more efficient way of delivering, you know, updated neurolo neurological content um, to our members. So we developed a brief asynchronous program really for delivering continuing education to neurology providers across a broad range of topics. And after going back and forth for a long time, we decided ultimately to develop an educational curriculum, which we based around the different awareness months. So for example, May, I'm a neuro-oncologist, so you know, May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month. We have to get that out there. But you know, there's obviously Parkinson's disease awareness awareness month, Alzheimer's disease awareness month. So we used, you know, those awareness months and also the different subspecialty conferences to sort of guide the development of our curriculum. So we have a 12 month curriculum. There are six core topics which repeat every year. Um, and then we have another six rotating topics which change from year to year. So, you know, core topics are things like stroke, epilepsy, really, very big topics in neurology, whereas some of the rotating topics, I like to think neuro-oncology is huge, but that unfortunately fell into the rotating topic. Um, and sports neurology, thing, things like that, um, tend to rotate from year to year. And so we produce um, two neurobytes every month, and Bobby Roke has been amazing in really driving the production and not letting anyone miss any of their deadlines. Um, so these neurobites, essentially we appoint a neurobite champion who's a specialist in the subspecialty of neurology that we're focusing on each month. And we wanna use this as a pipeline um, and an educational opportunity for our junior members as well. So the idea is that the champion tags to junior people, whether they be junior attendings or more commonly fellows or residents to get them involved and actually the fellows or residents draft the initial content, the champion makes sure that you know everything is appropriately presented and then we actually have a secondary review process um, and our secondary reviewers have been really phenomenal in, in turning out these videos and then Bobby does a great job storyboarding them and turning them into these three to five minute videos. Yeah, and, and that, that was a great overview. Um, you know, um, in the past, like you said, um, you know, we as neurologists kind of went with best practices and the best practices in the past, and we're talking like, you know, the 90s and 2000s was, you know, CME that is rigorously done and, and you know, carefully vetted and, and you, know, you know, quality controlled. And, you know, you had to give credits usually in 15, 30 or, or 60 minutes. That's, that's the usual uh, for CME. But to produce, a, you know, for example, a 30 minute interactive video or interactive, you know, webinar where you click and drag and drop, these are not trivial. Um, you know, these take a long time and then you need the peer review and then you need uh, the content re review. And, and I mean, it literally took months and sometimes years, uh, you know, a year to get some of these out. That being said, when they were done, they were great, but you know, they're outdated. Micro learning is this new um, concept or this new style. Uh, if, if, and maybe some of our viewers don't, don't even, haven't even heard that term. But micro learning um, is, is, is like kind of the way the future is. And, and just like, you know, the question of the day app, if you answer 25 questions, then you get CME credit. You don't just get credit for one question, but if you do it for 25 days in a row, you get your CME credit and you can get the little increments of credit. So, you know, like we're, we're trying to adapt um, with the times. And I couldn't agree with you more with, with uh, millennials um, who are going to be our are, who actually are our new med students and, and residents, um, they've, they've had a learning adaptation in terms of their adult learning styles, and, and we're, we're trying to pump out material like that. So um, I, I've loved the Neurobytes um, you know, plan. I, you know, the fact that we can get the topics out so quickly, that they're well-designed, they're brief. Um, you know, I've been involved now in four bites um, with 
uh, with Alzheimer's disease, you know, uh, two on a risk reduction, uh, one using a fellow, actually a former chief resident who became a fellow at Columbia in, in cognitive neurology. Um, so we've, we've really tried to integrate uh, folks, another chief resident recently. Um, so I think it's been great uh, from both a faculty and educator, uh, educational development perspective too. Um, when it comes to the COVID uh, neurobites, um, how did that come up? And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, pumping things out quickly, what was it like to, to be in the middle of a pandemic? Um, we had members that needed to be, you know, educated about, about the latest stuff. And that's why the AN kind of jumped on board. Uh, what was it like? How did you guys plan? What topics have you covered? And, and where can uh, viewers find these new neurobites? So, you know, I think Bobby gets the credit for initiating the email on this and saying, you know, with this COVID thing going on, should we should we be doing any specific neurobites to really address this? And then we put together a small, you know, sub working group to have a call about it. And I mean, I can't even tell you how quickly the emails were flying <laughs> in development of these videos. But I mean, serious props and thanks to the people who wrote and turned around these videos. I think the scripts were turned around within within days. And so I think there were two there are really two aspects that we wanted to address. You know, first was the overwhelming challenge to the neurology community that we were now doing everything via teleneurology or telemedicine. And a lot of us, you know, had never done that before, had no idea how to approach the neurological exam, what we could do, what we couldn't do, and of course, how we were possibly going to bill for this. Um, so we turned to Jamie Hatcher Martin and Bruce Cohen, who had a lot more experience with this, and asked them um, to do these neurobites for us. And they really answered our call, and I think produced two great videos which were released on YouTube and have been getting a ton of views. You know, I was pretty excited. I was on our faculty meeting last week and our, our co-chair started, we were, you know, of course, discussing teleneurology because it's the major topic in all of these faculty meetings, as I'm sure it is, across institutions. And, you know, he brought up a point that was brought up in the neurobites, I think not even realizing that I was involved. So I yeah. had to private chat him immediately and tell yeah. him. But yeah. um, so that was exciting. And then, you know, the other issue, of course, is what do neurologists need to know about COVID-19 and what are the neurological complications that are arising? And so, you know, when we put out the first video, um, you know, the work was, and the data was really out of China at that point. And, you know, I had a call with Bobby and Amanda last week, and I was like, you know, we need, we really need to do a second one now. And we just discussed that in our work group call yesterday about the proton, you know, prothrombotic state that's going on and the increased risk of stroke um, to try and, you know, update neurologists and clinicians about this in a micro learning type of way as well. Yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed the Neurobytes uh, because, you know, they, they're easy to watch um, their videos. So they, you don't need a special software or anything. Uh, they're three to five minutes. And, you know, for, for those out there, like what we usually do is about every 100, 120 words corresponds with about a minute or so. So we ask our faculty to put together, you know, 300, 400, maybe 500 max word uh, scripts. We then record it. Um, you know, you don't even need fancy uh, I, you know, I have some fancier equipment here, but you can use your iPhone. I think people record them with and with the iPhone is, is, is pretty high quality. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be, um, you know, if, if Neurobytes continue to be successful, uh, the first Neurobyte we ever did that was released, we had over a thousand, it was an, on Alzheimer's, so I was involved with that. Uh, we had over a thousand, you know, we have 36,000 members, a thousand people, um, you know, members watched the Neurobyte. That's a, that's a fair amount. One out of 36 members is, is pretty good. And that was just the first one. And, um, you know, what we hope is that these are continue to be successful and that we could, uh, continue to create, create more, which is great. And, um, I know there's, we have some, uh, can't, can't talk about it just yet, but we do have some cool plans for Neurobytes and maybe extending the reach a little bit, maybe adding, uh, some exciting aspects, but I, I better stop there. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I think one thing we can talk about is that we've released, you know, several of these onto YouTube now, I, which I'm pretty excited about to, you know, allow the general public to see them. And also, you know, of course, any neurologists or general practitioners who are not members of the Academy also, and they've gotten a huge number of views, you know, in total, we've had over 36,000 views now of our neurobites and these COVID uh, neurobites specifically when neurologists should know about COVID-19 has gotten over 5,000 views on YouTube. So does, doesn't compete with your interview with Sanjay Gupta, but 
<laughs> oh, you know, I had a lot of hair and makeup for that one. Yeah, I, I uh, that, that was that was I was sweating. I was I was freaking, um, <laughs> but that was fun. Um, I guess at, going forward, um, what do you think is the future of uh, micro learning uh, for our members? Um, do you think um, you know, and what and how do we figure out? You know, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about, and we can talk about um, when we first theorized neurobytes. We really didn't know is is a minute sufficient is 33 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15. Um, we actually did a research study. Uh, we actually did an education research study. We submitted an IRB actually through Cornell. Uh, we had the American Academy of Neurology involved. Actually, big, big shout out to, uh, to Roy Stroud, who, who really uh, grabbed the bull by the horns on that project, had a, an amazing uh, superior superstar med student, uh, Laura Beth, that just that jumped in and, and, and wrote up a paper. So we actually, um, and you know, the paper hasn't been published yet, so I guess we can't get, you know, too nitty gritty. I think it's to review hopefully uh, now at neurology but um, maybe you can give us a little bit of an overview about um, how we kind of like gave some data data driven evidence-based education uh, research into how we set up neurobytes yeah so I you know we went through a long process to try and understand what the best approach was so we had you know all these neural learns uh, with a ton of information in them, and so the initial thought was maybe we could just excerpt, take excerpts from these neural learning courses and turn them into short neurobytes of material. So we tried that first, but I think we all felt that really, in order to deliver the material in the best way we possibly can could, that they deserve fresh content. Um, and so that's when we came up with the approach that we came up with. I think, you know, we're all finding the shorter, the better. I think people have a short attention span. You know, many of our viewers still don't make it to the end, even with these three to five minute videos. So I think we're really aiming and we aimed with these COVID scripts to make them even shorter than we typically have. And I think there's a remarkable amount of information that you can deliver in that brief period of time. You know, the other thing is these courses need to be constantly reviewed, especially when they're talking about treatment guidelines or clinical trial results, because, you know, the landscape of how you treat and manage neurological conditions evolves so rapidly. So, you know, with, with things like that, like induction therapy and multiple sclerosis was, you know, an example from yesterday that really needs to be revisited almost yearly, whereas something like the approach to foot drop is maybe, you know, something that can stay in the library for a much longer period of time. Yep. Totally. Yep. So um, I, I guess, so just to recap, I, I think um, the American Academy of Neurology, I think some of us view the AAN um, in terms of education as the annual meeting. And you go to the annual meeting, you go to get some amazing content, um, really well curated, great speakers. Um, you get CME, which is, which is terrific. You fill out the evaluations and that's your education. But what the AN has really tried to do is, is push out um, innovative ideas, innovative products, um, and they're all available for free to members. Um, so anyone who isn't aware, you can go to an.com, uh, log in using your member number, and then click on the, uh, the education uh, tab, I believe it, it is. It's one of, the, one of the tabs up there. And you can, uh, aside from looking at NeuroTracker, so you can see how many um, CME credits you've gotten, you can look at all the different um, uh, educational resources that are there. And, and hopefully, um, you know, with COVID-19, we'll be um, even more adaptive and and um, and uh, energized at, at getting stuff out there. We're also, you know, talking about uh, national neurology new conferences. Uh, I think with Zoom now, we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, so it's uh, it's going to be an exciting time for e-learning. So I, I think uh, I'm glad you joined in 2015. Yeah. That worked out. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very honored to have been able to join and to be working with such a great group of people right now. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I I couldn't agree with you more. A and staff have been terrific. Bobby's just been amazing, pumping stuff out. Um, Amanda has really been involved. Uh, Amanda Chamberlain all along the way, um, and uh, Chris Friggen, of course, who's kind of taking charge from the top, uh, doing doing terrific. Um, and Sue and Christy have been great too. And then most most recently, Michaela Morris um, has just been awesome. She jumped in. We needed help with the COVID-19 stuff and she ju jumped right in and now we're pushing out all these videos and, you know, probably approaching about 50,000 views or so uh, on these uh, weekly COVID-19 videos, which is also part of the e-learning uh, uh, program. So Alex, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. 
Well, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. And if uh, someone's watching and has some ideas about what our, uh, our, these videos or our e-learning subcommittee should cover or pay attention to, you can uh, send an email to elearning at aan.com. Alex, thanks again. Stay safe out there. Thanks a lot. You too. Excellent. Take care. Bye-bye.